determine the equation of the inverse. So whenever we're trying to find an equation of the inverse, the steps, there's two steps that are involved in that. As soon as you see that, you're going to think, first step, I'm going to switch x and y. And then second, we're going to solve for y. And this is very much like what we were doing at the beginning when we were solving for x in the activity that we did in the last class. It's this idea. But if we switch x and y first, well, then I get x equals negative y squared plus 4. Now, solving for y is saying, can I get y all by itself? A couple of things I might do in this situation. I might move the y squared over to this side and the x over to that side. Get my y squared by itself. How do I get rid of something squared? I take the square root. Taking the square root, though, this is where we have to remember, whenever we take the square root of both sides, we add a plus or a minus. So in the end, we get y equals plus or minus the square root of x minus 4. Sketch the graphs of y equals negative x squared plus 4 and its inverse. Okay. We have two options here. While sketching y equals negative x squared plus 4, that's fairly straightforward. We can use our transformations. What's all happening? Well, it's a parabola, but the negative is going to flip it down. The plus 4 is going to move it up 4 units. So we're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4. This graph here in blue is the y equals negative x squared plus 4. Now, to graph the inverse, which I'm going to do in green, we can either try to graph the inverse equation, which is that y equals plus or minus negative x plus 4, or we can say, what do I know about graphs? It's going to flip over the line y equals x. And all my x and y coordinates are going to get switched. In my opinion, I think that's going to be easier in this situation. Because I can take the vertex, which is at 0, 4. If I switch my x and my y, I'm going to get 4, 0. I can take my x-intercepts, negative 2, 0, and 2, 0, switch the x and the y, and I'll get 2, comma 0. and negative 2 comma 0. I can use that trick of turning my paper sideways to flip now that I've got some points. And you might see that the shape of the graph looks like this. Now, I purposely chose the easier way of graphing first, right? Because you would probably want to do the easier way yourself. This green graph that we just drew happens to be plus or minus the square root of negative x plus 4. In fact, the plus or minus, can you see that if you only looked at half of the green graph, can you see a square root graph? The top part is the positive square root of negative x plus 4. The bottom part is the negative part. If you were using your transformations with a square root, what does the negative do? Horizontal or vertical reflection? Inside the square root, anything inside 
is going to be horizontal. So we've got a horizontal reflection. The four, horizontal or vertical translation. Horizontal. It's going to move it four to the right. Why? That special note came up again. If you have a horizontal reflection stretch or compression and horizontal translation, you have to first write it in factored form. So if I factor that negative out, I would get x minus 4, which would move it 4 to the right. Okay. There's my square root graph. If I do a horizontal reflection, it would look like that. And then if I moved it 4 to the right, because it's minus 4 after it's in factored form, 1, 2, 3, 4, can you see that you get the top part of the green graph that we have? Okay. And if in this second one, which also I would need to write in factored form. The negative outside would be a vertical reflection, which would flip it down. Then you would take that part that you just flipped down, and you would flip it horizontally. And then finally move it one, two, three, four to the right it gets the bottom part of that parabola. Much more difficult because of the factoring thing to graph it from the equation. Graphing it w from the original graph and the points, much, much easier. But it's good to see both. Part A, determine the equation, good. Part B, sketch the graphs and their inverse, done. Part C, is the inverse a function? No. It does not pass the vertical line tests. Some x values have more than one y value. Questions five and six for practice.